Mr. President, this Council's primary role is security. Yet, for close to 50 days, this Council has not advanced a solution related to its mandate. We have heard here politicized condemnations, baseless suggestions, distorted calls for calm, and extensive outcry over the humanitarian situation of only one side. Yet, what we have not heard was a single real solution. We can have many, many more briefings, debates, and emergency sessions, but if this Council cannot suggest united, a solution that also ensures the safety of Israelis, then it doesn't address the security of both Israelis and Gazans alike. I reiterate, this war can end right now, today, without one more shot being fired. If Hamas returns all of the hostages and turns in all those who took part in the savage massacre, the war would be over immediately. This war did not start on its own, on October 8th. It started on the 7th of October with a deliberate and planned massacre, the likes of which the Jewish people has not suffered since the Holocaust. And my suggestion to end it, worthy of discussion here, and any suggestion to end it, worthy of discussion here, is only one that will bring home all of our hostages and prevent such atrocities from happening again. Mr. President, no country in a similar situation, no country would agree to anything less. The hostage deal that was approved last night is clear proof that Israel is willing to take far-reaching steps. Try to comprehend what Israel has agreed to do last night. We are releasing terrorists who have been convicted of harming Israelis in return for women and children, women and children who were savagely abducted from their homes by these Hamas Nazis. This is the deal. But make no mistake, as soon as the pause ends, we will continue striving towards our goals with full force. We will not stop until we eliminate all of Hamas's terror capabilities and ensure that they can no longer rule Gaza and threaten both Israeli civilians and the women and children of Gaza. The, rep the Palestinian representative cannot tell you that he doesn't want also Hamas to, to rule Gaza. I hope the Council takes the, day, takes the days of this pause to advance a real solution that will help bring an end to this war, that will guarantee security rather than strengthen the terrorists committed to Israel's annihilation. This is the main concern. The time has come for this Council to tell the truth to the people of Gaza. I don't expect the Palestinian representative to tell them the truth that Hamas is solely responsible for their situation, and that once Hamas is gone, the future can be brighter for everyone. Distinguished Council Members, today's briefing focuses on women and children. Let's put aside the fact that the war in Gaza began with Hamas's mass murder, rape, and mutilation of Israeli women and children. Let's put aside the fact that there are still Israeli women and children, including babies, being held hostage in Hamas terror tunnels. As you heard today, these are mere footnotes to our briefers and to the UN. But right now, I want to ask you one simple question. Where was the UN for the past 16 years? Where was UNICEF's outcry over Hamas's indoctrination of children to become martyrs? Where was your uproar of Hamas turning children's hospitals and schools into weapons catches? Where was UN women's outrage at Hamas treating women like property and using them as human shields? Why is it that only now, only now you have decided to talk about the women and children of Gaza? 
It's not as if Gazans have been living in a utopia of human rights that, like the impression being made by the briefers, was upended by Israel three, five, five weeks ago. How can you have the audacity to suddenly remember Gaza, Gaza's women and children after ignoring them for so many years? After the rule of Hamas, the people of Gaza, under the rule of Hamas, the people of Gaza have been continuously exploited. Yet not a single utterness of condemnation has been heard from you against Hamas's reign of terror and their poisonous brainwashing of children. Over the past weeks, you have all woken up, but sadly, not for the right reasons. All these vast, well-funded UN bodies are suddenly up in arms about the situation in Gaza, because now they can blame Israel. The women and children of Gaza are only your concern if you can weaponize their suffering against Israel. And yes, they suffer. This is shameful. UNICEF doesn't really care about Gazan children, and UN women doesn't really care about Gazan women. If you did, you wouldn't have reminded quiet, remained, remained quiet for the past 16 years as Hamas ruled Gaza with an iron fist. Council members, look at this picture. This is Yichye Sinwar, the leader of Hamas. And the child he is holding is a victim of UNICEF's indifference. A picture is worth a thousand words, and this says all you need to know about Hamas's treatment of children in Gaza. Executive Director Russell, have you never seen this picture? Are you unaware of the terror summer camps that Hamas runs every year in Gaza to indoctrinate children to murder? So many Gazan children were born into a culture of hate, a culture that glorifies violence and educates kids to murder. It is a death cult that puts martyrdom ahead of life, coexistence, and the pursuit of peace. How many UNICEF reports have been written on this? None. I'm telling you, none. While we teach our children to love and accept others, the children of Gaza are taught, and they are not one, the one to blame, that the murder of Jews and Israel's annihilation is their life goal. They are educated on this in their schools, yes, including UNRWA schools. Why has this child abuse never bothered UNICEF? There is absolutely no chance that UNICEF is unaware of this. So, Executive Director Russell, where has your organization been all this time? Rockets have been found in children's bedrooms in Gaza. Rockets launchers were located inside a Scouts Youth Movement clubhouse. Missile manufacturing facilities were found under mosques, and catches of assault rifles were found in UNRWA schools. We have not heard UNICEF's condemnations against Hamas's exploitation of Gazan children as human shields. Where is it? Hamas wrote a script for the international community and UN bodies are playing their parts perfectly. Hamas seeks to increase the number of civilian casualties in order to coax you to pressure Israel. They want you to ignore their crimes while pressuring a law-abiding democracy. Hamas exploits Gazans, weaponizes casualties, and seeks to co-opt the UN to tie our hands and prevent us from eliminating them so that they can continue murdering and slaughtering in the future. This is their script. I just can't understand why UN bodies are so willing to follow it. And this sick phenomena of exploiting children in, is carried out on the street of Gaza every day, every day. This is a photo 
taken a few days ago in Gaza. These savage Hamas terrorists are walking around in broad daylight, armed and in uniform. After effectively strapping, strapping children to themselves as live body armor, as human shields. This is the enemy that Israel is defending itself against. This is who you hardly have a single word of criticism against. So I ask again, where have the briefers been for all of these years? Where are their voices now? Why are Hamas's crimes non almost non-existent in this briefing, when Hamas and only Hamas is solely responsible for the situation in Gaza? There is no other explanation for this other than ap apathy towards Gazans coupled with burning hatred for Israel. This is not a briefing, this is an inquisition. Now, distinguished council members, I would like to turn to the second elephant in the room. Our briefers today gracious, graciously decided to mention, thank God, the hostages in Gaza, among them women, children, and the elderly. They weakly called for their return pure lip service. But the briefers ignored a very significant fact. They overlooked the 1,300 Israelis brutally massacred on October 7th and the 8,650 wounded that are still, still hospi being hospitalized. In a briefing on women and children, our briefers intentionally, and I'll explain why I say it, intentionally refused to thoroughly brief you on the barbaric acts of torture, of sexual violence, of rape perpetrated by Hamas against Israeli women and girls. I say intentionally because I have sent two letters to Executive Director Bajos extensively detailing these appalling war crimes. Yet, not only did I receive no response, she also did not see it fit to detail these crimes here before the Council. So yes, this was an intentional act of omission. In a recent letter to Executive Director Bajos, I not only included written te testimonies, but also concrete visual evidence. Pictures of young naked Israeli women being paraded around Gaza as the crowds jeered and cheered. UN women also received links to interrogation of Hamas terrorists who said loud and clear that they were instructed to rape Israeli women. And just two days ago, the executive director received another letter from me with additional evidence of mass rape and sexual violence perpetrated by Hamas. This included a first responder's testimony of finding girls with their pants around their knees, semen on their back, and bullet holes in their heads, as well as pathologists identifying corpses from young girls to elderly women raped so violently that their pelvic bones were shattered. I sent this picture of Naama Levi, who was dragged out of the trunk of a jeep by a Hamas terrorist, it's part of a video, wearing sweatpants soaked in a blood around her backside. I also sent this picture of Shani Luke. Shani was dancing at the Peace Fe Festival before she was abducted and murdered by Hamas. This is what her body looked like, with the Hamas terrorists on top of her. Look at her. Look at Shani. You want to discuss women in conflict, women's rights, women's dignity? What about the dignity of Naama Levy and Shani Luke? What about their rights as women? 
Sadly, to our briefers, the horrors endured by these young women are not worthy of mentioning. After all, they're Israelis, and as today's briefing has made abundantly clear, Israeli victims don't matter. Nearly 50 days have gone by, by since these atrocities were committed, since young girls were savagely violated, yet the world is still waiting to hear a clear public condemnation from UN women against Hamas sexual crimes. Shame on you, you UN women, shame on you. Is UN women not charged with ensuring that, I quote from their website, all women and girls Thank you, President. Is UN Women not charged with ensuring that all women and girls live a life free from all forms of violence? Doesn't the banner of UN Women website currently say, hashtag no excuses? Hasn't the word come to believe women? Hasn't the UN? To the UN and its agencies, Israeli women are not women. Israeli children are not children. The UN, with Secretary General Gutierrez at the, at the helm, refuses to report on murdered, raped, and kidnapped Israelis. Every UN body stands up solely for the Palestinians while dehumanizing Israelis. This is the policy. The UN, by choice, refuses to accept Israeli numbers of statistics. The ridiculous claim is that Israeli casualties either aren't part of the body's mandate, or they have no way to verify facts provided by Israel. On the other hand, when it comes to fabrications supplied by Palestinian terrorists, and in this case, directly from Hamas in Gaza, the UN treats these numbers as God's truth, without any form of verification. This is a conflict that started before the UN was even established. And throughout all of these years, the UN blindly accepts every claim and figure from one side, from one side only, without any verification mechanism, while ignoring or remaining indifferent to all Israeli data. And this is what ends up in your reports. This is what you are briefed with. I ask you all to process what I have just said. For all of you that don't understand why Israel's call, Israelis call out the UN, this is the reason. What would you do if you were in my place? What would you do if your children were slaughtered and your girls were raped, but the UN and, it, and its vast spider web of agencies, bodies, and committees stood idly in silence? Take a moment to think about this. To the briefer task with protecting all women, girls, and children throughout the world, including presumably those who are Israeli and Jewish. I want again to look me in the eye and explain to me why, why you have been silent in the face of mass rape, acts of sexual violence, brutal torture, kidnapping, and murder. How is it, how is that, that your briefings are so one-sided when you all know that Israel does everything in its power to mitigate civilian casualties while Hamas does everything in its power to murder civilians, both Gazans and Israelis. Don't answer me. Answer our mothers, our wives, our sisters, our daughters. Answer the Israeli public. Answer the Jewish people. At least have the courage to be honest and give us real answers. We are still waiting. Thank you, Mr. President.